Universities are increasingly taking it as their duty to protect students from dangerous thoughts, words and ideas. Young people now aren't so much raging against the machine as going, oh machine, please protect me from scary words like libtard. When do we become a society that was so afraid of insults? I mean, if you can't handle being offended, you're not going to go very far in the real world. The way I see it is you've got to be resilient because... Mind where you're going? Fuck work. <laughs> Smelly prick. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. I sat down with Ella Whelan, a journalist and governor for the Down With Campus censorship campaign. When did this issue first raise its head? It's been happening for quite a long time right from kind of the 80s and the 90s, and now it's reached its crazy point where we're banning sombreros, fancy dress, jokes, songs, speakers, books. Yeah. But it has been brewing for a long time. I've heard some safe spaces ban clapping. I mean, who would be offended by clapping? Well, so instead of clapping, you're meant to agree, disagree, or not sure. And that's because the sound of clapping apparently can trigger people with nervous dispositions. What about people with Parkinson's who think that you're taking the piss? <laughs> I wouldn't know. So are you personally unoffendable? There must be something I could say that would give you the rage and um. No, so this is the whole point. I can be offended and I can feel upset okay. and angry and hate you, but what I can't do is stop you from saying it. So that's the difference between taking offense and being censorious on the basis of that. So you would defend my right to say that, you know, say people on benefits are who, if I see them, I would them in the and then them with a muffin. Should I be able to say that? Yes. You might not be a very nice person for saying it, but you should be allowed to say it. OK, wicked. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> with the problem seeming worse than I first thought, there was only one place to go, the pub, where I met with free speech advocate Peter Tatchell. So, it seems like censorship has gone crazy on campus. Is that a fair reflection of what's happening? I think it's a bit exaggerated, but it's the National Union of Students' policy to ban speakers from six extremist organisations. The problem is that some student unions have interpreted the no-platform policy more widely. How is this affecting education? I mean, aren't we just breeding a generation of snivelling little bellends? <laughs> I think it's reasonable that students should have protection against victimisation. I don't think they should have protection against ideas that they find disagreeable or even offensive. You know, some of the most important ideas in human history have caused great offence. So you talk about causing offence. If I was going to use the word dickhead, do I need to issue a warning saying, heads up guys, I'm going to call someone a dickhead? Well, it's probably not the right word to use at all, full stop you know, in a, in a, in a civilised conversation. But if you are going to use it, then, of course, it's probably best to say, I'm going to use some bad language. Um, be warned. Yeah, I agree, it's not that great a swear word. I mean, I've got loads of better ones than that. <laughs> I'm sure you have. Cockwomble. <laughs> what is a cockwomble? It's a penis that clears up after itself. <laughs> Cockwombles aside, it was starting to feel like you can't say nothing no more. <laughs> it was time to go into the belly of the beast to see if I could toughen up these student snowflakes. You lot, your generation, you've had pretty cushy lives, right? But all we ever hear about is you're no platforming people, taking offence and worrying about where people are going to piss. <laughs> now, I'm here to get you out of your safe spaces and into the real world. I get offended all, all the time, yeah? Like on Twitter. Let's just have a look. Jeff Norcott is a greasy conservative. <laughs> uh, xenophobe, the warrior princess. Let's go, let's go. Fat LeBlanc. <laughs> Anyone want to leave? What about you, Ginger Beard? Is that too much for you? Because you could go. You could go whenever you want. The door is over there. Look at your fucking eyebrows, mate. Yeah, it looks like two slugs of God in your forehead. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I'm impressed. So, to my surprise, they'd actually taken my insults pretty well. But what would these rucksack fucks be like at dishing it out? <laughs> Go on, insult me. Well, where, where did you pick that outfit, General White Man Emporium? <laughs> yeah, all right, whatever. Um, what about you? You got anything? You like the Daily Mail's wet dream. <laughs> well, anybody else want to have a pop? I, sorry, I do actually have one. Uh, when it rains in Wimbledon, do they use your forehead to cover the main court? <laughs> So, 
it turns out 95% of students aren't that easily offended and generally don't give a shit. But the problem is, the 5% that do are the sort of lily-livered types that will seek out jobs of genuine influence or end up working for The Guardian. <laughs>